You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, round, 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 round. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for clicking on the video. They say in the YouTube world, save the best for last, because that will make people watch the video to the end. Well, I am not going to do that to you. I'm bringing you the goods straight out from the jump, but I will steady the ship because I want to show you some happenings on the patio before I lose track and things really, really kick off. Stand the man, oh my goodness. I can count seven spikes. I believe to have four from the bottom that I can clearly identify. One is coming out of the side of the basket. It's looking good. It's coming straight through the iron grating. And then I have one where I'm a little bit sus whether that's going to make it through the little iron grating, the area that I've created for it, trying to predict its trajectory. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've lost two because of the way they were growing. They did not release themselves from the mesh that is its own root system in the moss. But what started out as one spike some weeks ago where I thought that's too early, I was wrong. It is now up to seven minus the two. If they had made it, we would have had nine. Oh my goodness, not complaining. I'll take lucky number seven any day. It would be nice not to lose any more so that we can have a spectacular show from Stan the Man. There have been some happenings on the east side shelf as well, but they are just in their early stages yet. Most obvious is my Prostechia radiata. She has got a beautiful spike coming, just waiting for her blooms. The first ones in my care since she was gifted to me from Tsvetsi's orchids. Then I've got Durigan Crucero do Sul. That sheath is fattening up. Yes, it is. I know one bud is in there. Maybe we'll get two, who knows, but I do hope to keep them safe until she blooms out. I took a picture of a new growth because I don't want to pull the orchid out. This is the new growth of the declining Sunya Green Mailman. Ha! <laughs> She's got no leaves, She's got desiccated pseudobulbs, blackened pseudobulbs at that, but the new growth is looking like it wants to prove a point, so we'll just let that keep doing its thing and see how far we get. I'm absolutely digging the root growth on my Darwinara Blue Charm. Oh, as well as my little weirdo section in the Lekka and Self-Watering setup, which is a loose Neary Blue. Ugh, all those roots are still active. I keep misting them just to make sure that the dry air now doesn't take them out because they are so pretty. And I just thought I would show you my fancy roots coming from my, my Tsuru. I have never seen roots come up to the surface like that. So this is a first. It's a treat. I'm keeping those misted as well because it would be nice not to lose those. Maybe they'll find their way into the pot. And of course, Neo Phoenicia Falcata is <laughs> just starting her spectacular show. Looking forward to that beautiful fragrance. I already have one spike somewhat open, another one is semi-open. Yeah, this is exciting. I think I counted nine. I have difficulty counting things, but <laughs> I think I counted nine, which equals the amount that we had last year. So that's a good thing. And all my Ancelia Africanas on the top shelf are coming onto their own with spectacular debris basket aerial root styly growth. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> My Panarica Prismatocarpa sheath is also nice and bulgy. Something is going on in there. In the blooming alley, I've got my Parafalonopsis labucensis growing a new root. Unfortunately, a leaf had to be sacrificed because of it. The leaf just deteriorated. Uh, well, I'll take a new root, but please, no more leaves because this orchid is such a slow grower. I can't afford to lose another structure. Maybe a sign of a new leaf would be a wonderful little idea. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. I still got some buds left to come from the Epidendrum radicans I got from Insta Orchids and ADD. Recently, we saw the Zygopetalum Luisendorf. She is in spike with some buds. She hasn't bloomed out yet, but that's something we can look forward to. The Bretonia Shelob crossed with the Rinconia Marie L. We saw that as well in the blooming alley. She is developing her spike. It's amazing. I love it. My XXL size Rupiculus Lelia, Kautskiana, that I got from Anonymous, that sheath 
there's something in there as well. It has been blind for the longest time, but it is chubby and there's a slight resistance to the touch when I kind of, you know, I don't squeeze it hard, but a little bit of a <clears throat> nibble with the fingers. Something's going on in there, so I'm kind of excited to see if that is going to develop a spike and bloom for us. That would be amazing. One growth of my Lelia Zip is also showing shadows in the sheath. I've had two growths that developed over the winter. Last year she bloomed on both of those growths. If we only get one growth this year, I shall be super, super happy because high light orchid, very low light in winter, and yet we might just get one spike to bloom out. That would be awesome. So I'm gonna be super careful about that. I would love to see those beautifully colored blooms again. Very excited. It's the first on the patio. My classic Neostylus Lucneri has now got three fans in the basket. It arrived with one fan, a little small fan when I got it. And then fast forward to 2023, it grew two more fans and the three fans all have spikes. It's gonna be a beautiful little basket of goodness. I'm looking forward to it. In the meantime, I've still got a spider web there that can stay until she blooms out. I am so excited by the progress of this orchid. Oh, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful sight. My Prostechia cochleata. I think it's a variety Lancifolia. I can't be a 100% sure. This morning, hello, we've got those little funky octopus thingy looking like bloomies. <laughs> no fragrance just yet, but judging by the amount of spikes and blooms, it's going to be a knockout in the blooming alley just in time because my Dendrobium nobly has now finished blooming. She was intense here with her freesia style sweet sugar blooms permeating the space. But here comes Prostechia cochleata variety lancifolia. Mm -mm -mm. This is going to be a good one. Woohoo! Escocentra ampuyathea is starting on new root growth. Roots are extending, a new root is coming from the stem. Much needed, of course, this time of year, hot, dry air, no humidity. It's all up to me to keep that humidity up and encourage those roots to grow. Happy to see this new development on my Escocentrum ampuyathea. Oh my goodness, I'm going to veer off a little bit. Ha! Huh. My Vanda Chow Praia, apart from the fact that the root growth is intense, insane, and it's holding on, this orchid was not treated with copper. And look at the roots that she is growing in her little microclimate by the hedge. Well, the top piece has two spikes growing. The top piece above the crack. Two spikes are on the way. Right next to it, my Papilio Nantha Therese also has two spikes developing. The buds are looking awesome. I love it. That Papilio Nantha Therese is also growing incredibly well this season. It is insane how much bulk it's put on. The size of the new roots are chubbier, bigger, more juicy looking than any other roots I've seen this orchid grow. And the spikes are longer and it looks like we're going to have more blooms than ever on each spike. The progress of this orchid has me absolutely impressed. I am so happy because these two have to live outside in my cold and nasty winters, which they shouldn't be able to do because they're warm to hot growers and I get temperatures down to five degrees Celsius during the winter on a consistent basis, not just a one-off. No, night after night after night. So I'm so impressed with this totem pole. I feel totally vindicated from losing my big vandas simply because of what I'm seeing with regards to the root growth on my totem pole. Having lost all confidence thinking I can't grow big vandas well. Seeing this, the hat trick of errors, the course of events and the decline of my big vandas, as much as I miss them, I feel a little bit more comforted by the fact that I am able to grow these vanda roots because I've lost all my big vandas due to the copper treatment and then there was a hat trick of other things that happened. So I thought my climate vandas, it's just not going to work. This is the first season without any large vandas in my collection and when I see what's going on with my totem pole, I am majorly encouraged. It was just a hat trick of events that happened. Copper treatment was one thing. 
but then other things followed and that is why my big band has declined. Yes, I may have bitten off more than I could chew, but you know, in the back of your mind, you're thinking I can't grow them anymore. Well, I'm not going to replace big vanders anymore, but this totem pole, oh, it's so encouraging. I feel totally vindicated. <laughs> it's a wonderful time to be an orchid grower in southern Spain, I kid you not. Meanwhile, ta-da! On the left, my Lelia purpurata, variety Brachhäuseri striata, has opened her blooms as well, and the trio is complete. What a beautiful sight. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Please give this video a like. It would help tremendously. And if you think that this inspired you to share it with somebody else, please feel free to do so. That would help immensely as well. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, let me ask you, what are you waiting for? Let me know in the comments why you haven't subscribed. Maybe I can clear a few things up, remove all doubt and earn your subscription. It would be wonderful to see that support as well. Until the next new video airs, and before you may want to look at another video, let me just say thank you so very much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day. These are the shenanigans that are going on on the patio. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition though. Please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye. You're still here? <laughs> what a coincidence, so am I. <laughs> Well, in my rounds, the next day, this clip has to come in. This is my Jumelia arborescence. The next day, I have looked into the crevices of the leaves and lo and behold, the first spikes are starting to show because, you know, she blooms in July. So as from, let's say, mid-June, around about there, I'm like, really, really looking, looking and bingo today's the day so i just thought i would slide that in right at the end so thank you for really staying to the end of the video you're so appreciated bye